Have you ever traveled the historical background of science and technology in the Philippines? If not, let me take you to have a time travel. So what are you waiting for? Let's go! The first period is the pre-Spanish period. Before the colonization by the Spaniards in the Philippine Islands, the natives of the archipelago already had practices linked to science and technology. Archaeological findings show that modern man from ancient mainland first came over in the land across the narrow channels to live in Batangas and Palawan about 48,000 BC with simple tools and weapons of snowflake and was later developed new skills like sawing and polishing stones. In 3000 BC, they've learned to produce Aegis's ornament of seashells and pottery that prosper for 2000 years until competition arrived with Chinese porcelains. Around 3rd century BC to the 11th century AD, they've learned how to use metals as their tools during this time, and Filipinos were involved in ore mining such as copper, gold, bronze, and iron. This period of time is so-called Iron Age. Also, during early Spanish chronicles was also noted that early Filipinos built a refined plant-built warship called Caracoa that was suited for inner island trade. Hence, records indicate that trading relationships have existed and established between the Philippines, China, and Vietnam. In addition, even at the earlier times, Filipinos were already aware of the medicinal and therapeutic properties of plants and the methods of extracting medicine from herbs. They already had an alphabet, numeric system, and a weighting and measuring system and a calendar. Filipinos were also already engaged in farming, shipbuilding, mining, and waving which led them in creating the finest products of engineering, which is Banawi rice terraces. Let's jump in the Spanish colonial period. The colonization of the Philippines contributed to growth of science and technology in the archipelago. During this period, Spaniard introduced formal education and founded scientific institutions. In early years of Spanish rule in the Philippines, parish schools were established where religion, reading, writing, arithmetic, and music was taught. The Spaniards established colleges and universities in the archipelago including the University of Santo Tomas. Also, biology is given focus during this period. Botanists, chemists, and medicine scholars are all had contribution to the field of science in the Philippines. Moreover, the study of medicine in the Philippines was also given priority in the Spanish era, especially in the later years. The Spanish also contributed to the field of engineering by constructing government buildings, churches, roads, bridges, and forts. In addition, Galleon trade have accounted in the Philippine colonial economy due to the prospect of big profits by the Spaniard colonial authorities and the first way to light up globalization. Furthermore, sanitation and more advanced methods of agriculture were taught to the natives. However, agriculture and industrial development on the other hand were relatively neglected. The opening of the Sioux Canal saw the influx of European visitors to the Spanish colony and some Filipinos were able to study in Europe, who were probably influenced by the rapid development of scientific ideals brought by the Age of Enlightenment. We hope you've learned something about the two periods. So let's jump in the American period and post-Commonwealth era. The progress of science and technology in the Philippines continue under American rule. On July 1, 1901, the Philippine Commission established the Bureau of Government Laboratories, which was placed under the Department of Interior. The Bureau replaced the Laboratorio Municipal, which was established under the Spanish colonial era. 
The Bureau dealt with the study of tropical disease and laboratory projects. On October 26, 1905, the Bureau of Government Laboratories was replaced by the Bureau of Science. And on December 8, 1933, the National Research Council of the Philippines was established and became the primary research center of the Philippines until World War II. Science during the American period was inclined towards agriculture, food processing, medicine and pharmacy but not as much focus was given on the development of industrial technology due to free trade policy with the United States which northern and economy geared towards agriculture and trade. In 1946, the Bureau of Science was replaced by the Institute of Science. In a report by the U.S. Economy Survey to the Philippines in 1950, there is a lack of basic information which were necessities to the country's industries, lack of support of experimental work, and minimal budget for scientific research and low salaries of scientists employed by the government. In 1958, during the regime of President Carlos P. Garcia, the Philippine Congress passed the Science Act of 1958 which established the National Science Development Board. That is American period and post commonwealth era, so let's proceed to Marcos era. During Ferdinand Marcos' presidency, the importance given to science grew. In his two terms of presidency and during martial law, he enacted many laws promoting science and technology. One of it is the amended 1973 Philippine Constitution, Article 15, Section 9, Paragraph 1. He declared that the advancement of science and technology shall have priority in the national development. In his State of the Nation address, he declared that science was necessary for the development programs and thus directed the Department of Education to revitalize the science courses in public high schools. Thus, the Department of Education with the National Science Development Board or NSDB is organizing a project to provide selected high schools with science teaching equipment over a four-year period. In 1968, he recognized that technology was the leading factor in economic development and channeled additional funds to support projects in applied sciences and science education. A year later, he allotted large amount of war damage funds to private universities to encourage them to courses that focus on science and technology and research. In 1970, he emphasized that by upgrading the science curriculum and teaching equipment is crucial to the science development program. Furthermore, he also provided further support for the promotion of scientific research and invention with Presidential Decree No. 49, Series of 1972. This decree contains details on the protection of intellectual property for the creator or publisher of the work. He also established the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Service Administration or PAGASA under the Department of National Defense to provide environmental protection and to utilize scientific knowledge to ensure the safety of the people for any upcoming calamities and storm. Lastly, in 1986, he established the Mindanao and Visayas campuses of the Philippine Science High School to encourage careers in science and technology and to be more accessible to the talented students in the Mindanao and Visayas areas. And now, we are on the last stop, the Fifth Republic. In 1986, during Corazon Aquino's presidency, the National Science and Technology Authority were replaced by the Department of Science and Technology. 
giving science and technology a representation in the cabinet. Under the medium-term Philippine Development Plan for the years 1987 to 1992, science and technology's role in economic recovery and sustained economic growth was highlighted. During Corazon Aquino's State of the Nation address in 1990, she said that science and technology development shall be one of the top three priorities of the government towards an economic recovery. After the presidency of Cory Aquino, it was followed by the term of Fidel V. Ramos, which he believes that science and technology was one of the means wherein the Philippines could attain the status of new industrialized country. During his term, he was able to establish programs that were significant to the field of science and technology. The Fifth Republic really had a great contribution to science and technology, where the government provided 3,500 scholarships for students who are taking and interested in science and technology courses. Schools was become modernized and updated in adding high-tech equipment. It was also during this time when science and technology personnel were given priority by the government by approving the Republic Act No. 8439 in 1997, which entitled Magna Carta for Science and Technology Personnel. Its purpose is to give incentives and rewards to people who made an impact and influential in the field of science and technology. Moreover, during Joseph's Stratus presidency, the internet was pushed for the advancements of schools and industry. Then it was under the term of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo when science and technology reached its golden age. Furthermore, during the time of President Benigno S. Aquino III, four distinguished scientists like academicians Gabino C. Trono, Angel C. Alcala, Ramon C. Barba, and Edgardo D. Gomez were conferred the rank and title of National Scientist by virtue of Malacanang Proclamation Numbers 737, 782, 783, and 843 on August 12, 2014 at the Malacanang Palace in recognition of their outstanding works and contributions to science and technology in the country. And that's all we could have for you, showcasing the historical timeline of scientific invention of the Philippine history. Hope you learned something about. Until next time, bye!